What he said, so it worked well in that case. Okay. So if we have uh, some conflict, we some leaders have different type of uh, action. Could be strategic action or communicative action. So strategic action means we try inducements or threats. Do you understand inducement? Inducement is like we say in English, the carrot and stick approach. So, we used, in the donkey, the donkey didn't move in the old days, right? So either you can hit the donkey with the stick, or you can give it a carrot, and then it moves after the carrot. So we say carrot and stick approach, means both giving the carrot and hitting with the stick, right? Inducements and threats. So this is one way to get people to do things. Okay, if you do this, I'll give you some pizza, right? If you don't do that, I'm going to take away your, some of your salary, dock your salary, right? Uh, this can damage the sense of solidarity and integrity. So people can feel their integrity is damaged a little bit when they're threatened or induced like that. And also the solidarity. Uh, solidarity means the atmosphere of working together. Okay? So our communicative action, we attempt to reach mutual understanding and coordinate behavior in terms of a collective agreement as the way things should be. So we're reaching some understanding with our workers, okay, and we work together to make it the way it should be. This can be better for relationships. We build a better solidarity, okay. So <coughs> this. Also, in different cultures, we have different management styles. Mm. In this case, it's not very good unless in the last instance, right? Usually, it's not good to threaten anybody unless in the last instance, like nothing else works, right? So, <clears throat> generally, these days, the world is moving more in this direction. So, for example, I'm your boss and you're late, you're coming late to work, there's a problem, right? So I tell you, if you're late to work tomorrow, I'm going to dock your salary. Reduce something from your salary, right? How do you feel? Sit. Hmm? Sit. If you're late to work tomorrow, I'm going to take away Ochan Wan from your salary. <laughs> Han Wan. Hmm? How do you feel? He's upset and dead. Hmm. Do you feel a little bit like a child? <laughs> it goes against your integrity. Right. Do you feel solidarity with me? Do you like me or don't like me? <laughs> don't like me? <laughs> right. Generally or just in this case? <laughs> so, anyway, a better way is we try to make a mutual understanding about the way things should be. So I talked to you about the issue, why is it that you're not, why is it that you're late for work, right? Maybe you think, anyway, I'm sitting in the office doing nothing if I come in at this time, right? 
I'm not doing anything productive. So that's why I usually I'm a little bit late, right? Or I live very far away and the traffic is very bad in the morning time. So if I can come just five minutes later, it saves me 20 minutes of, of traffic, right? So we discuss about it and then we come to an agreement. I say, oh, I understand why you're late. That's okay, you can come five minutes late, okay? Or I can say to you, oh, I understand your issue, but if you're coming five minutes late, then sh everybody will start coming five minutes late, okay? So you have to understand that it can't be the case that I make a special exception just for you, right? So we discuss it, and then you agree, okay, I'll come earlier, right? Now, now how do you feel? Bit better? Yes, sir. Better, right? So we use the communicative action to solve this leadership style, right? Rather than just the strategic action, where it's maybe it's quicker for me, right? I, I also say this to my wife. I say, oh, you shouldn't ever threaten me. That's not good for the relationship, right? But my wife says, oh, I want to do it quickly. If I threaten this more quickly, get a result, right? So if I don't want to spend time talking to you, then I can get the result quickly. I can just say, be on time tomorrow or I'll duck 5001, right? <laughs> Very quick, right? So anyway, I should take the time to sit down and talk together, right? That's a communicative leader. Otherwise, uh, I can uh, do this one. It can damage the relationship, right? So you can feel free to use this too if you're in a relationship with somebody. You can tell them. I learned that the strategic action of giving threats is not good for building solidarity. It's not good for my integrity. I don't feel respected. Right? So please don't threaten me. <coughs> use, you should use a communicative action. Right? Would you like to be married to me? <laughs> I'm going to use all the theory to explain everything to you and teach you, like a lecturer, all the time. <laughs> what do you think? It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. a problem. Some people sometimes they become their jobs, right, after a few years. And my wife also says, don't lecture me. <laughs> I'm not your student. Okay, so anyway, uh, if we're having a conversation with another person, we have some other rules. We have to respect the other person. You should be able to put yourself in their shoes. Okay, again, I use this. I say to my wife, put yourself in my shoes. She says, no, I don't want to. <laughs> so I tell her, you're not doing the conversation properly. <laughs> you're supposed to put yourself in the other person's shoes, right? To understand them. You have to respect the other participants, so don't uh, use any bad or angry language, right? Respect the absent stakeholders. So you're having a conflict, but somebody is not in the room, okay? Then <clears throat> you have to still think about that. This is a problem. Oftentimes, the person who's not in the room for the discussion, they can lose out, right? Because me and you can make an agreement, which suits us, it's easy, but she wasn't there, then she can lose out. So we have to try and remember people who are not there. People should be allowed to speak freely, so we don't interrupt them. Don't interrupt somebody if they're talking to you all the time, right? Listen to them. Speak truthfully. So. If we say some false information, it means that we can't make an agreement. Okay, it's bad for both of us. Because we say some false information, then they will just get angry, right? They know it's false, I know it's false. It's not, we can't make a rational agreement. Okay, one way is to find values and norms that we agree on and put them into practice. So, when we have some conflict, you understand conflict with our employee or with another worker, right? We shouldn't really, you know, treat them with disrespect, you know. Oh, you're just the worker. Just listen to me, right? Who are you? I'm the boss, right? That's kind of disrespectful, okay? I have to see from their eyes. Uh, I have to allow her to speak freely. 
Okay, whatever her problem is, allow her to tell me. And truthfully, and a good way is to remember that we don't, we, at the end of the conflict, we both want to have a better relationship, right? And we want to work well together. So we want to find things that we have in common, things we agree on or we have in common. And we can work with those things, right? And also our body language in this conflict is important, okay? So we should be smiling and have a nice tone of voice and so on, nice body language. Then we can make a good relationship, okay, and a good agreement. So the best solution is conversation and debate, making fact-based arguments and rhetoric. So if I have a disagreement with you, we shouldn't disrespect each other, say false things, start fighting, right? Then I am really angry, you're really angry, in the end maybe we go to court. We call our lawyers, we go to court, or we have a really bad relationship, we have to change departments. These things can happen in the workplace, okay? So if we follow these steps, when we have conflict in the workplace, we should be able to solve it in a, in a friendly and nice way with the other person. And using some uh, argument which is based on fact, okay? then we should agree at the end what is right and fair and the result of the conversation can be used for future ethical documentation. So we're having a conflict about an ethical issue, right? Maybe the police commissioner is telling the Minister for Justice it's okay if some police officers sometimes delete the speeding fine, it's not a big problem, right? And the Minister for Justice is telling the police commission, to, no, it is a big problem, right? It makes a bad culture in the organization. So even though it happens just a small time somewhere, it's still very important to stop it. So they have this conflict, they respect each other, they talk about it properly. In the end, the Minister for Justice has the best fact-based argument, right? He says, look at Argentina in our, or any other country. If the police starts to make this small corruption, then the corruption can start to get bigger in the police, and then we can have a bigger problem, right? So in the end, the police commissioner accepts that's right and fair, and then we make the document, ethical document, okay, to support this. So it's challenging to implement in practice. I mean, one problem in conflict is personalities, is the biggest conflict in problems. So you have to eliminate your like or dislike, personal like or dislike of the other person when you have a conflict, right? So let's say that we just don't like each other, we're very different people. That can be a big problem. It can make our conflict more worse, okay? But we have to take away our personal feelings and just follow this kind of steps. And so it can be challenging, right? If you ever had a conflict with somebody you didn't like, it's not easy, okay? To, do, to follow these steps, reasonable steps, and being nice, and so on. Uh, so, in the end, all of this doesn't work. Last point, we may need to take some strategic action. So she's my employee. I tried talking to her, I tried everything, right? We did all of this, we tried to agree on what is right and fair, but she still doesn't agree with me. So I have nothing left to do, right? I have to take some strategic action in the end, okay? So I have to say, Yes, you need to do this, otherwise uh, we are going, your performance review might not be very good, right? If you don't do this. But that's only the last step, the last step of the, this. Okay, so again, you guys might, you're doing teamwork, so you might have some practice of uh, having a problem in your team. Okay, if you have a problem in your team, somebody does something you don't like, are you going to tell them, I'm the leader? Do it what I say or you're out of the group. Hmm? Or are you going to try to make this kind of communicative action? Which one? Which one is better in the conflict situation? Communicative action, right? Okay. So, as I say, feel free, you can copy this and if you have a problem with somebody in your relationship, you can show them. <laughs> this slide, right? They're not respecting you or they're not doing that kind of thing. You can tell them this is the way that we're supposed to solve our conflicts. Okay, so this can also help in the personal life. So, uh, 
In summary, there are intellectual and motivational limits to ethical behavior. So some people, uh, they don't understand well what ethical behavior is, intellectual limit, or motivational. They don't have the motivation to do it. The company's process is set up in the wrong way, right? So they think it's, it's worse if I do ethical behavior. So an effective ethical program will create a culture to act with integrity using a systematic and process-oriented approach to intellectual and character development. So first of all, we want to make people understand what is in this ethics program through our vision statement and our code of conduct. What is ethical behavior? What do we expect you to do in the company? Right? So then they can't say, oh, I didn't understand. Right? Then next, we have to motivate them, put the right processes in place and systems in place in the, in the company. And then we have to do the continual development to make sure that uh, we're always improving. So uh, the time is finished for today. So then we will discuss these few questions in the, last, in the next uh, lesson.